it's time to talk about energy. Energy is a tough concept, but it's, it's a big part of what the universe is made of. And energy can be stored and used in different ways. And so we're going to talk about um, just some of the, the more mechanical aspects of energy, how we can store it. And one way you can store and get energy back is in springs. You notice, uh, notice this vehicle here. It's bouncing. It's got springs. What are the springs for? Well, when you go through a bump and everything, if you don't have springs, then you're going to feel every bump as you go. But what the springs do is they take that energy of the bump and they store it and they release it more slowly. So instead of this, you're kind of going like this. It reduces it. So a spring, it's, it's a lot like a battery because it can store energy. Well, you know, wind-up toys are springs. They can just, you can wind them up, put mechanical energy in and store it, and you can get that energy back later. So let's talk about the energy of a spring. So we need to know two things about springs in order to calculate the energy. There's the, the formula for the energy stored in the spring. It's called potential energy because it's got the potential being used. And also there's a relationship between the amount of stretching or compressing you do on a spring and the amount of force it takes. So first, let's talk about something called Hooke's Law. It's named after Robert Hooke, who lived in the late 1600s. He was a contemporary of Isaac Newton. Pretty smart guy. And, uh, I mean, not like us, but you know. Um, and he derived this relationship for a spring. Let's say I, uh, I could pull on it, or I could have it sitting here, and I could press on the spring with a certain force. Say I sat on it or something. And I'm going to compress it. Well, how far is it going to compress? If I push on it with that force, maybe it'll compress it this far. We'll call that a distance D. <sighs> maybe I should put the force over there so it looks better. Yeah, I like that. All right. So here's what Hook figured out. The force that goes into stretching or compressing a spring is equal to some spring constant, some constant. It's called the Hooke's Law constant or the spring constant, times the displacement, whether it's a shrinkage or, a, or an expansion. It's the change in the shape from the equilibrium. So if I want to double the length that I stretch this spring, it's going to take twice the force. Three times, three times the force. But the spring constant remains the same. K is a spring constant, or Hooke's Law constant. And uh, it's going to have units of force over distance. So it's going to be like newtons per meter, or pounds per inch. Some kind of units like that. Now when I do this, when I compress the spring and when I stretch it, it wants to go back to where it was, and it can do work when it does that. And so the energy stored in the spring we'll call it E sub P for potential energy, because it's stored energy. The potential energy stored in the spring is one half times the spring constant times the displacement squared. One half kd squared. All right. So we should do an example. So let's do that. I'll write these equations down. Again, so we can see them and work with them. There's Hooke's law. Force is a spring constant times the displacement, whether it's stretched or compressed. The potential energy stored in the spring is one half times the spring constant times the displacement squared. So let's do an example. Uh, let's compress a spring. Doesn't matter if I'm compressing it or stretching it. I'm going to take a spring. And I'm going to stick a mass on it. And it's going to compress it. Stick that mass on it. And it's in a gravity field. And so the weight is going to compress it. And it's going to compress it at a distance d. 
So let's say the mass is uh, 4 kilograms and the displacement, D, is 2 centimeters. I want to know what's the spring constant? Let's see. Force, Hooke's law says force is the spring constant over times the displacement. Now, I solve for the spring constant, I divide both sides by the displacement. The spring constant is the force over the displacement. I know the mass, the force is the weight of the whatever I stuck on there. Ah, so that's mass times gravity. So force is mass times gravity, and it's over the displacement. And so I've got 4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 2 centimeters. And that's going to give me 19.6 kilogram meters per second squared. A kilogram meter per second squared, that's a newton. That's force. And I'll just say newtons per centimeter. That's my spring constant. Now I can put three kilograms on now, or two kilograms, and it would stretch it, it would compress it less and less, but the spring constant would still be the same. It's a linear relationship. B, what's the potential energy that's been stored in that spring? Well, let's see. Potential energy is one half times the spring constant times the displacement squared, which is one half times 19, excuse me, 19.6 newtons per centimeter times 2 centimeters squared, which is going to be, let's see, 39.2, I'm going to get rid of one of these centimeters, but there'll be one left, newton centimeters. That's not a very convenient set of units. So I'm going to figure out how to get rid of that. I need meters on the top, centimeters on the bottom, 100 centimeters in a meter, centimeters cancel, and so I got 0 0.392 newton meters, which is a joule, so about four tenths of a joule. I can do this uh, metrically or in English. You know, if I took a weight on there, just that'd be the force. I wouldn't have to multiply by gravity. But this is how you calculate the spring constant, and it's how you calculate the energy stored in the spring.